the Pentagon found spies uh. in their in the network for the Joint Strike Fighter project. This is a three hundred billion dollar program uh. that the Pentagon is running. It's the most sophisticated weaponry we have yet. The network was hacked, and get this: several terabytes of files which were encrypted by the bad guys before oh. before leaving the network. So no one knows exactly what it was that was taken, but several terabytes of data over the last about a year and a half. This is unconscionable. They know that it was the design and the avionics material uh, were siphoned off and sent somewhere. We Awful. don't know where. Um, it's believed to be China, but again, as we've said, that you know, it's impossible to really nail down full accountability on on these things. So, um, uh, but it was uh, uh, a you know a big concern and a black eye for the Pentagon, and uh, I mean, and I really hope that we begin paying attention to this because it just seems like this is this is rapidly on the rise. This is the 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 most publicized, worst such such incident we've seen so far. Steve, how um, do you explain this? This is not something that is hard to protect. These are valuable, hundred of billion dollars worth of value state secrets. First of all, why is this stuff even on internet connected computers? Yeah, I know. Why um, is it, it not secured if it is? The Wall Street Journal's report indicated that the most sensitive of the material was is on its separate network, which is not connected to the Internet. So, you know, there is some sense of that. But clearly, this material, which is on Internet connected machines, should also not have been in that network. I mean, it's, it's not it's not rocket science. We know how to protect this stuff, right? Yes, yes. I mean, we do in theory. And in fact, that, that's why I'm so very nervous about the push that we're seeing towards medical records being put online. It's like, oh, goodness. I mean, I mean, I recognize we want to bring our, our health care costs down in the U.S. And it's one of uh, the current administration's major pushes. But it's like, hey, you know, we, we there's just no demonstration that government knows how to do this. And I haven't yet seen a smart government person. I mean, that's sort of an oxymoron. I mean, in terms of like like technology and real security protection. Well, come on. The NSA must have smart people. Uh, there must be some smart people. You think these people well, are then, just doofuses? Then is, it, then is it bureaucracy that I prevents? I figure mean, it out. Yeah, I agree. The NSA down deep in some think tank behind locked doors with all kinds of, you know, authentication they've got really really good people but it's very much like it's very much like you don't put your good people on tech support you put them on development and so the, you know the people doing tech support it, it's it's too expensive to have a good person and have them you know talk to customers so you have sort of an okay enough person who deals with customers and maybe they're able to escalate that to somebody who's more capable you know similarly the NSA is not going to have they're really good guys, you know, doing I, IT networking because there's like really more important things that they need to be doing. And uh, I mean, but but again, I mean, this is sort of this sort of comes back to my rant from last week, you know, where I was talking about how much we have grown to put up with Windows. And I was reminded that speaking of Conficker, that, you know, it knocked this the. the um, I think it was the Sheffield hospitals, uh, the Sheffield hospital chain in the UK off the net. I mean, I mean, all, all out of operating mode for some length of time because the equipment in the operating theater was running Windows and was on the Internet. So, you know, first of all, you, you, it's worrisome that that critical care equipment would have Windows as its operating system and also critical that it would be on the Internet. It's like, oh, well, we turned off Windows Update because the machines used to reboot in the middle of an operation. It's like, oh, my God, what? how many things can you have wrong with the picture? But this I understand, and there are, no, I understand this, but this is the nation's most critical military secrets. 
And they're not only sitting on the internet, but they're apparently doing so with, you know, no really good protection. Yeah. I mean, if you had these military secrets in your house, Steve, you could lock them down. Right? Uh, yes, I could, actually. <laughs> Although, yes, you could! My world is much simpler. In fairness, my world is much simpler. I guess they there have were- contractors who are looking at the plans over online, or there's some sort of... I mean, there's something going on. Oh, don't worry. We'll just put this little website up that allows you to, you know, do vendor agreements or something. And so there's some cross site scripting (sighs) vulnerability that allows them to get into the server. And it's because, as you say, Leo, these networks are incredibly complex, lots of interconnections. And at some point, doubtless, this this network was established by people who knew what they were doing and it was really bolted down and secure. But then over time, stuff got added. I mean, all it takes is for someone to stick an infected USB thumb drive into any machine on that network. And unfortunately, if it's running Windows and it's processing, um, you know, uh, auto run dot INF files and it may have been stuck in a laptop before that that had Conficker B on it because Conficker version B would jump over to removable drives when they appeared. Um, that's all it would take to suddenly, you know, have the malware on that machine. Or as we know, um, social engineering attacks are highly effective. So some, some, you know, Excel document or plans or something was sent to somebody who was expe- in, in who was expecting them, and um, sure enough, you know, there was a, a virus that wrote in some sort of malware came in, and so. It's it's not that hard to set these things up so that at the start they're secure, but it's it's really difficult over time to maintain that level, that initial level of vigilance. And I think that's what happens is is, you know, it's like, well, we'll just connect this up briefly or I'll I'll just open a port in my firewall just, you know, for, you know, for some specific event. And then we forget. And it stays open and something crawls in. It just seems to me this isn't rocket science and it should be something that, uh, uh, look, I understand if a bank gets hacked. I understand if a hospital gets hacked. I don't want our military secrets to get hacked. I mean, there's just certain things or our or, or our infrastructure, our grid. Uh, I hope we've yeah. learned. I hope we've learned something here, ladies and gentlemen. The, the experts who were asked about this said that the nature of this breach is such that it arguably makes the, the the whoever it is who received the information would have received enough to do a much better job yeah. at defending against course. what this technology is meant to do for us. You know, we did the the Blackbird, the the, the stealth bomber, the stealth uh, fighter. All of that was secret. We got the jump on them. We did the Manhattan Project. We got the jump on them. Yeah, that was the the good news was, but there was no internet back then. I mean, this this global network really is a mixed blessing. Yeah, I, mean, I don't have to tell any of our listeners that. It well, is, take it off the freaking public internet then, if you can't figure it out. Yeah, right, and, and then, see, that's the other problem too, is that because it is you know the positive side, the internet can be so useful that not having connectivity because starts to become an increasing problem. You worry. It's like, wait a minute. We can't. We can't not be on the internet in order to be in business. I mean, well, it, couldn't it, they make? I mean, look. If they're if it's defense contractors, I mean, okay, legitimately, they might need a network to see this stuff, but they could do a VPN and secure it and not allow public internet access. You shouldn't be surfing the net on a on a machine that has the plans. I mean, it just seems like there's ways to do this. I, I, maybe well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not a, a non-trivial I'm thing. I'm sure that this system was. Far more sophisticated than you know than the typical corporate or home network. Oh, I would there's, hope. I yeah. mean, I mean, there's no doubt about it. But clearly, it what whatever it, however it was, this actually happened, and we have no details about you know the actual details of of how this happened. But I'm sure that it it was you know somebody on the outside really wanting to get access to this who spent time working on how to do it. And and the problem is that we've seen, you know, 
digital technology is a little more analog than we wish it were. You know, sure, everything is a one or a zero, but, you know, there are there are ways around absolute protections like firewalls, which you do think, OK, that's an absolute protection. It's like, well, yes, but what if the firewall itself? I mean, you know, Cisco. I mean, the, unfortunately, complexity is the enemy of security. And we do keep making these systems more and more complex, which makes them harder and harder to secure. Yeah. Yeah. 